So today's news is that Intel has branded its discrete graphics products and they're coming out in Q5 of 2021. What's your minimum specification? If you want an independent cloud services provider for home servers, VPNs, or clients, consider Linode and sign up today at linode.com slash techtechpotato for a free $100 60-day credit. A recent Gartner performance report shows the Node's topology offers almost double the database performance per dollar than other public cloud services. So we've been waiting for a couple of years now for Intel to release its uh, discrete graphics generation of products. And why aren't they here yet? And today is more of a marketing exercise in the fact that we're now getting the name of those products and the fact that they'll be coming out at the beginning of next year. This brand is called ARC, as in A-R-C. Now, Intel already has a brand called ARC, A-R-K, which is their database for, you know, CPU spec tables and stuff. This is ARC, A-R-C, is meant to signify the journey which Intel Graphics is going to go on through its next four generations of products. Now, the first architecture of this ARC brand is going to be called Alchemist. This is what we used to know as DG2. And then after Alchemist, we'll have Battle Mage, Celestial, and Druid. A, B, C, D. Hmm. Now for four generations of product, that takes us from 2021 to 2026, 2028, maybe around that time frame. And we're going to be using these names throughout. But Alchemist comes first. Now, specifically for Alchemist, for what is previously known as DG2, Intel said it's going to be coming to desktop and mobile in Q5 2021, which is Ian speak for saying Q1 2022. We did expect it to come out end of this year. Didn't say which one was coming first. We kind of really want it to become the desktop component first. However, Intel already has DG1 in the market, uh, which is in mobile, kind of discrete mobile form factor. So they have experience there. We may see that come first, but I'm pretty sure it's the biggest uh, discrete silicon we're interested in getting. Now, Intel did also name some sort of AI enhanced super scaling features. Apparently, they mentioned that in this launch video that comes with this announcement, and we're going to go through that now. Hi, I'm Roger from Intel. I have you notice on your sweatshirt, it says AXG. Hmm some exciting news to share about our graphics program. Graphics and gaming go hand in hand. I am a gamer. So are my friends. Gamer, what games do you play? And so are most of my coworkers. Games merge bleeding edge technology and all aspects of the creative arts to empower us to be a part of amazing stories. There are nearly 3 billion gamers worldwide. In many ways, gaming is a common ground that unites us across communities and cultures. And what I love about the gaming community is how it relentlessly pushes the computational limits of hardware and software. Does the gaming community do that? Or is it the games themselves and the hardware itself? The community also includes the users. Are users pushing the hardware? I mean, they want better hardware, but... Especially graphics. Gamers are also creators. Almost 1 billion hours of game content was published by gamers to YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook last year. And gamers watched almost 28 billion hours or 3 million years of game content. So how much of that game content is, say, Ninja streaming Fortnite? I mean, there's a lot of content out there that doesn't get watched. In that same time. At Intel, we've hit notable graphics performance Hi, milestones in the last few years. We quadrupled the performance of our integrated DG1. graphics. We introduced our or first entry discrete LP. graphics product this along with DG1. DeepLink multi-XPU platform acceleration. It's no secret that we're building a roadmap of high-performance graphics architectures. Over the coming weeks and months, you'll hear a lot about our discrete graphics solution. Based Over the next weeks and months, yes, please. Weeks rather than months. ...on these architectures. But today, we're announcing our first high-performance graphics brand for this solution. We're now ready to take it to the next level. As gamers, we expect more. But as Intel, we want to deliver more. Butteries it, all these people, gamers, 
at the launch party, they're going to have to have all of them in a gaming tournament just to showcase how, how good they are. Smooth frame rates from thin and light notebooks to high performance desktop PCs. Simultaneous, no compromise. Gaming, streaming, and multitasking. Games that not only look real, but act real by exploiting exponential advances in AI hardware. Immediate access to the games. Uh, exponential advances in AI hardware. So are you saying AI for the graphics improvement or AI for actual gaming improvement? That's going to be one to keep an eye on. We want to play when we want to play them. Our vision is to bring frictionless gaming to 3 billion gamers, and we are unleashing all of our assets to get there. CPUs, XPUs, memory, interconnect, and software. Our commitment to this vision... XPUs? So you're not calling them GPUs anymore? Come on, Martin. ...vision is writing a new story for Intel. We all have a story to tell. A story has a structure with plot and character inflections. Every game, gamer, and creator has a story, and every story has an arc. But not every story is worth listening to. Inspired by this, I would like to introduce our new consumer discrete graphics brand, Intel Arc. Arc will span multiple generations, and each product generation has its own code name. So our upcoming hardware product that used to be called DG2 is now codenamed Alchemist. The following generations will be Battle Mage, Celestial, and Druid. We can't wait to get these products into your hands. You should expect Alchemist-based products in Q1 2022. Until then, here's a sneak peek of our pre-production products in action. Thank you for watching. Technical demos. Okay, that's interesting. 480p upscale to 4K. Hmm. It would have been fun to see games come out in Q1A. Eh? Here we go, AI accelerated super sampling. This is what's going to compete against Intel and uh, NVIDIA and AMD. Mm. Let's see. It's a little bit hazy around here. Is that something we should be looking for? Mind you, this scene probably isn't great for bitrate on, YouTube, on uh, whatever player they're using. AI applications captured on Intel Arc pre-production silicon. And there's the silicon piece. I fully expect somebody's going to be able to take care of all of that and see exactly what's on that silicon. There we go. Intel Arc. So for a while, We've been having a Intel for their overcomplicated naming strategy when it comes to CPUs. We don't necessarily want ARC to be, you know, ARC 1035G7 kind of really hard to understand, hard to follow, unless you're really ingrained into this stuff. There have been suggestions that say, well, first generation might be ARC A512. The fact that they've called it Alchemist and they've got Battle Mage, Celestial Druid means that they could lay into the ABCD naming a lot more. But we're going to have to wait until they start talking about exact products to find out what they're going to be calling this stuff. But initial impression of these code names of the architectures moving forward, this is a step in the right direction for Intel. So let me know what you think about these brand names, these code names, this whole branding thing in the comments below. And uh, we'll see. If it's if it comes out right, my minimum specification here is the fact that we were expecting these by the end of the year, and now they're coming beginning of next. Intel has to make sure that the minute they're launched, that they're going to be competitive for the segment, for the price, performance, for power, and that way we can have a three-year battle between AMD, Nvidia, and Intel, 
and it's going to be good. I'm hoping we get something that's priced right and competitive and provides options for gamers. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it'll instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.